1963 Impala SS restoration part 5 okay we have the Impala on the frame fixture and we are proceeding with the new doors we're gonna be installing new doors now I get a lot of questions about hey who has the best uh, replacement body panels well I would say no one 100% of the time but these doors came from classic industries not a paid promotion or anything they usually just are pretty consistent with good quality I'll just leave it at that anyway okay let's take a look at the door it's pretty nice and the inner structure looks really nice crisp everything looks like it should now hopefully it fits <laughs> okay here's a tip these are the original hardware in the threads we don't want to install that with all of that gunk in there so we're going to take a little bit of time wearing our eye protection of course and clean these up a little bit with the wire wheel And there it is. Now we can install that. Yeah, we don't want to run that into uh, into threads, cause ourselves a big problem. Now this is a uh, quick tip. This is something I always do. I usually work by myself, so this really helps out a lot. So what I'm doing is I'm making a little stud, and that's the same thread as the bolts. And I will put one in the top and then one in the lower hinge. There's a shot of that. Okay, next up. Some tips and tricks on the hinges. Okay, here are hinges. They've already been media blasted, epoxy primed. Here's some of the other hardware. And first tip. Okay, here's a hinge. Obviously a little wiggle Well, we're going to replace the bushings now rebuilding the hinges doesn't just remain Replacing the bushings. Okay before I remove the hinges. I'd mark them right and left That's really important if you disassemble these get them mixed up. Yeah bad time. Okay. Do you see these little uh, bite or teeth marks Barely see it on that one, but they are there. Now, hardware, holding the doors on. Always retain the factory hardware if possible. And let me show you why. Okay, now this is a factory bolt that I had cleaned up, a door hinge bolt. And see the little teeth on the washer? And the same, these are both door hinge bolts. Both have the teeth. Very important. Now, replacement hardware. Okay, now this is a really nice quality replacement. Now, the washer is cupped, but there are no teeth. Here's a side by side comparison. I mean, pretty accurate. But there are no teeth. And I've even seen some <laughs> replacement bolt kits that are literally just some regular bolts and washers. Yeah, don't even don't even waste your time. Now the reason that you need the teeth is that once that bolt is seated with the washer, that keeps that hinge from moving. Very important. Okay, now let's move on to the uh, striker plate. Now this is the factory striker plate. Now it has a shim. Okay, that shim is very specific. If you were to just put another type of shim, well, you're going to run into issues. And the reason is that also has, I don't know what these are called exactly. We'll just call them teeth. But that, when you mount this, 
and set it into place, that is going to keep the striker plate from moving around. Now, I've had issues in the past, and I learned the hard way, without those teeth on the uh, washer bolt or the teeth on striker plates, other accessories, body panels will move around. So save yourself some trouble. Okay, now under the hardware. This is really specific hardware. Uh, you can see the little groove in the factory bolt. And always clean up your hardware. I just cleaned all of this stuff up on the uh, wire wheel. Now another really important tip. Okay, this is a number two screwdriver. We don't want to try to remove this type of bolt with a number two screwdriver or the or any other inappropriate headed screwdriver. Now, this is the appropriate tool for this bolt. No slop, because if you don't use this type of tool, well, you're going to end up rounding that off. And then you're in, it's all downhill from there. Okay, another item. Don't skimp. Use a quality re rebuild kit. And I've already opened one pack. We'll go through that. Okay, this one comes with a uh, lower hinge replacement spring. It's a really nice, accurate reproduction. Not just some spring they threw in the kit. And now we've got the little roller. This kit comes with a roller replacement. Some some replacement kits come with uh, basically a hinge pin and a uh, or the uh, bushings. Yeah, uh, splurge on the expensive kit. Get a good quality kit. Bronze bushings, and let me add, it may be expensive. The parts you're buying, but they can still be low quality, if that makes sense. So, let me rephrase, buy a quality kit. Okay, here we go. We're going to rebuild one hinge. I always place the workpiece in the middle of the vise, not on the ends of the vise. Then you get uneven pressure, and over time, well, you're gonna, it's going to be hard on the vise. Okay, we're going to just use an air hammer and unseat the hinge pin. And then we will manually drive it out. And there it is. Now, the shiny parts are where the wear pattern is. Some are a lot worse than others, and that's why we replace the uh, hinge pins also. Okay, I should have pointed out, you see the mark there the white mark that's a soapstone mark that's on both pieces so we know which way to orient it when we reinstall okay now we're going to drive the actual bushing out and what we want to do is catch the lip of the bushing first we want to unseat it and then we drive it out. And this one is uh, pretty easy. Sometimes they are very difficult. And there it is. 
Okay, now we're going to drive that the second bushing out. And when doing this type of work, it's not so much about power. It's more about accuracy. You'll understand if you uh, rebuild some hinges. Okay, so we're going to install the bushings. I've already installed one side, and I'll show you the easy way to install a bushing without damaging it. Now, it's really critical to start the bushing straight or square in the uh, in the hole. If it's cocked or uh, not square, yeah, you you can uh, break the ear off of the bushing or get some deformation. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Okay, and these are just paint sticks. Now I'm towards the edge of the vise because there's not a lot of pressure. Otherwise, we always want to use the center of the vise. And we're just going to press the bushing in until it completely seats. We want to make sure it's completely seated. And that means that it is uh, flush and fully installed. We're good to go. Okay, now, like I mentioned, those two uh, marks, one on the um, outer piece and then the inner hinge. That way we don't get them turned upside down because that, yeah, I've done that before. Yeah, it can happen. And we used our brass hammer because we don't want to beat parts up. A little bit of WD-40. And notice the way I'm holding the hammer. I'm not using a lot of force, just tapping that thing in there. And we want to put something underneath so that it doesn't bottom out until we fully seat it. And there it is. Hinge pin bushings are installed. And our alignment marks are there. We know that it's in the correct orientation. It's not upside down. And nice and tight. And that's always a really overlooked step. Whenever you start a restoration, rebuild the hinges. And just confirming, yes, the body is bent. I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. And I'll show you how we proceed with that. We're going to get these hinges installed. Now you'll notice that to start the bolts, I'm not using an impact or anything like that. Uh, you want to start them by hand. And then you'll also notice I don't have like a half inch drive impact running these things down. We just want to barely tighten them up because if you do that, you can stretch the threads and then it's all downhill from there. Big problems. So we're just going to uh, not watch that movie. And there it is. So this is critical. Okay, when you align a door, you want a parallel line with a rocker door and then flush with the rocker to the door. Once those are set, then you work backwards. So now we have a nice parallel line uh, between the rocker and the door. Okay, now you can see how much the body is actually bent. Well, it's an ugly duct right now, but we're going to fix all of that. And I'll 
give you one clue. If you know the right place to lift the car, I'll show you what happens. Well, our gaps is starting to come back and that's how we're going to proceed. This car is really weak because of all the uh, bad work that's been done. So, hey, stay tuned for part six. Show you how to fix all this. And as always, thanks for watching.